Let's turn some pieces of wood into an adorable driftwood village. Hi there, I'm Jane from Sustain My Craft Habit and welcome back to our channel. I've always wanted to turn driftwood pieces into one of those cute maritime village scenes. I started by dry brushing a few pieces of driftwood in different maritime colors. So I was thinking this turquoise, beautiful sunshine yellow, some white pieces, and then a navy blue. All the supplies I'm using here are in one of our creative of habit craft boxes but you can also gather your own materials to make this particular project. I did a combination of brighter colors and then toned down the yellow with some white to give a bit of variation. So you can see there are six pieces that are painted and this tallest one is going to be the lighthouse in the center of the scene. I painted that first with a dry brush coat of white paint and then added some navy wide stripes from the top to the the bottom. Now that all my buildings were painted, it was time to add some of the details. I started by painting little black squares for the windows. And on each building, I changed the positioning and the number of windows. So you can see on this blue one just had three. And then on this white building, I actually made round windows. So you can decide how many and which ones you want to do for your piece. After those black squares dried, I went over them with some white paint and a fine paint paintbrush and created frames uh, around and within each of the windows. One of my favorite ways to make crafts such as these a little more functional is to add on some cup hooks to the bottom and then you could hang keys or even your dog leash on them if this is by the front door. The driftwood is really soft, so I could just um, screw those cup hooks into the bottom. In our craft box, we also include a variety of these laser cut wood pieces in a maritime theme for this particular craft. Now it's time to assemble all the pieces together. I used a piece of four by eight balsa wood as the backer on which to build everything. And I started by hot gluing on a lot Long piece for the bottom and then arranging my new painted houses side by side kind of alternating the taller ones and the shorter ones or you could also arrange them a bit more symmetrical uh, there's no right or wrong way to do this part now that the houses are on there we're adding some of the details I added two smaller pieces of driftwood across the top of the lighthouse to give it that top part of that and then added on the clock, this anchor, and some of the marine wildlife. I also added on some pebbles for a little bit of texture. You could also add in some small seashells or sea glass. I love the little touch of red with the crab and on this life preserver, it contrasts against those blues and teals and yellows uh, of the house. And there we go. We've turned some unassuming driftwood pieces into an adorable driftwood village that also acts as a key rack. You can find all the supplies we used in the description below as well as a link to the Creative Habit craft box which has all the pieces all together. Let's transform this thrift store find into beautiful beachy decor. I started by painting the blue part of this chalkboard with a white chalky paint as a base coat. The chalky white provides a great foundation for the decoupage and beachy embellishments I had planned for this piece. After that chalk paint was dried, on these side panels I added a little bit of decoupage glue, dried that, and then added some of these pretty napkins that I'd found at the dollar store. It kind of reminded me of mermaid scales, I guess, or fish scales. Really pretty shades of blue. And I'm just using my little Easy Press Mini to iron that napkin into the glue that we had placed on there before. And I trimmed off the excess just with a little bit of sandpaper against the edge of the chalkboard. My napkin was a bit short for the sides, so I took a little bit of time to just line up and add another piece of the napkin in there and it looked perfect. You couldn't even tell that there was a join there. Once that part was done, I was excited to dig into my collection of seashells and sea glass to add these embellishments to either end of the chalkboard. 
And as if that wasn't fun enough, I had to use this beautiful stencil from Chalk Couture that I recently got as a part of the July Club Couture membership. So we are pretty new to Chalk Couture. This is about a couple months in and I'm still learning about it, but it is a really fun and satisfying way to add special touches to your crafts and upcycling projects. They do have their own surfaces you can use, but how fun is it to find things or things that you have at home and add a little bit of embellishment. So Chalk Couture creates these mesh screen stencils and has these pastes that you use to apply to various surfaces. I used the white paste against this black chalkboard and applied it through the stencil and dried that and then put the stencil back down and for the bottom part it says explore. Um, I did that in a little bit of a bluish color just for a bit of contrast. So here you can see we're just spreading that paste into the screen part of the stencil. And then while it's still wet, you gently lift up the stencil and you have this beautiful design. The nice thing about the Chalk Couture is that you can also then wet it and wipe it off. And so I can keep reusing this chalkboard month after month or even with different designs or completely clear it off from that chalk design. After I finished gluing all those embellishments on, I had this lovely piece of art to inspire me to explore this summer. For the next summer theme craft, we're going to take some dollar store supplies and turn it into a lovely piece of art. So I'm using a canvas and we're going to do this reverse canvas technique, which simply means that you're going to remove the canvas from the wood frame. So this does need to have a frame on it and I'm simply using my utility knife to uh, cut that canvas off. I've used this technique on a number of crafts and they turned out really, really cute. So once you've gotten that canvas off of there, you can either paint the frame as I'm doing here with some white acrylic paint or white chalky paint or really any color. You can also stain the wood as we did for this other craft and then use that as a frame. The next part of this craft involved decoupaging this napkin, which I picked up at the Dollarama here in Canada, and then some decoupage glue and press that right into there, right onto the canvas. So this is that canvas that I removed from the frame. It's just the front side of it, and we're still using that. Okay, now before I put the canvas back on, I just dry brushed a little bit of gray acrylic paint and then a little bit of this beige or sand acrylic paint because I was going for sort of a driftwood effect around the wood frame. Once that paint was dry, it was time to reassemble the canvas onto the frame. So I basically now flipped over the canvas and the frame and glued that um, canvas onto the frame. You can see here, I'm just kind of lifting up the canvas and then putting some hot glue all the way around. And finally, the last step here is to just trim off all that excess canvas and the decoupaged paper. You can either use a sharp utility knife or some scissors for this step. Now it was time to add on those seashells. I started by lightly tracing a simple heart shape with a bit of chalk. You could use a pencil and then use that as my guide to fill in with these pretty white seashells. I'll leave a link uh, in the description below for where you can find some, but often the Dollar Tree or Dollar Store has bags of seashells that you can also buy, or if you're fortunate enough to be able to gather some on the beach, that's even better. We don't have such pretty ones here on our beach, so we have to make do with what we found. I've also been successful. Actually, this box that you see on the left of the video came from the Valley Village, I believe, for just a few dollars. So this is just one of those things that people often like to donate or get rid of when they're past their beachy phase, I guess. So you can see here, you're just going to take your time and with a little bit of hot glue, fill in all the space with the seashells. I kind of layered them on top of each other to give it a really nice raised 3D effect. This piece looked really cute as it was, but I decided to finish it off 
with a little wood seahorse cut out added to the bottom corner of the frame. We hope you enjoyed these three summer themed crafts and let us know in the comments below which is your favorite. We'll be sure to add all the supplies we used in the description. Thanks for watching and happy crafting!